the world's most wealthy sports teams are investing billions to build the biggest sports stadiums, from mammoth football stadiums to colossal sports arenas, each venue in today's video are unbelievably huge. Let's count down the top 15 biggest sports stadiums in the world. Number 15, Sanford Stadium, Georgia, United States. With views out across the campus of the University of Georgia in Athens, the Sanford Stadium is often said to be the most beautiful on-campus stadium in the U.S. But it's also been built in a way that you can hear every roar of the crowd, leading to it also being known for having one of the best, loudest, and most intimidating atmospheres in college football. Named after Dr. Stedman Vincent Sanford, who was instrumental in bringing the stadium to its current site. Construction began on it in 1928, and it opened in 1929 with a capacity of 30,000 people. Since then, it's been known for its hedges that surround the field, but while that design feature has remained, the rest of the stadium has changed substantially. Through nine major expansion and renovation projects, further levels and seating areas have been added, and the stadium's current capacity is 92,746. Despite its age, it does feel modern, with LED lighting, a huge HD video board, and 77 luxury suites. In 1996, it was a venue for the Olympic Games, and it held a number of other events too, but it remains primarily the home of the University of Georgia's football team, and a place that they performed very well at. One of the reasons for this, along with the usual home advantage, is that one of the very few college stadiums where the field faces east to west instead of north to south, and with an open west end zone, opponents sometimes struggle with the sun shining through. Number 14. New Administrative Capital Stadium. New Administrative Capital, Egypt. Built as part of the New Administrative Capital Project, which will eventually become the new capital city of Egypt in place of Cairo, this capital stadium is one of the newest huge venues, and it was only completed in June of 2023. With a capacity of 93,940 spectators, which makes it by far the largest in Egypt and the second biggest in Africa, the plan is for it to become the new national stadium instead of the 75,000 seat one in Cairo, and it's all part of Egypt's vision for future development. As well as the main stadium, it's part of a larger sports venue, which also includes a training ground, two large indoor halls, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and plenty more, all with the hope that this new city will soon be able to host either an Olympic Games or a Soccer World Cup. All the intent is for the main stadium to host high-profile soccer matches, it's got a running track around it too, which does open up the chance to host athletic events as well. It's an incredible looking structure too that's incorporated Egyptian history and building techniques into its design, and taking on an elliptical shape, the feature that stands out the most is the roof, which was inspired by the headdresses that were worn by the ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti. Number 13. FNB Stadium, Johannesburg, South Africa Found in the Nazarek neighborhood of Johannesburg on the border with Soweto, the FNB Stadium, which is also often known as Soccer City or the Calabash, is the largest stadium in all of Africa, and it's used to host games of the Kaiser Chiefs FC that play in the South African Premier Soccer League, the National South African Soccer Team, and the National South African Rugby Union Team. It was originally built in 1987 with a capacity of 40,000 people, but as parts of preparations for holding Soccer World Cup in 2010, it was completely redesigned to increase the capacity to 94,736, with a total of 195 luxury suites and with every spectator sat within 330 feet or 100 meters of the field and no restricted views at all. The exterior of the stadium has been designed to look similar to that of a traditional African pot called a calabash, and there are lights around the base that simulate a fire beneath it. As well as being at the epicenter of South African sport, the FNB Stadium has played a much larger role in the country's history too. It was there that Nelson Mandela gave his first speech in the city after being released from prison in 1990, and it was also where his memorial service was held in December of 2013. Number 12. Camp Nou, Barcelona, Spain Soccer is by far the most popular sport in the world, and in Spain, it's verging on being a national obsession. It makes sense then that one of the largest soccer stadiums is there, and it's the home ground of FC Barcelona. Officially known as Spotify Camp Nou, following a sponsorship deal with the streaming service in 2022, it was first opened in 1957, and unusually has a lower capacity now than it did then. Due to the introduction of safety laws, the venue has been redesigned several times, and while its record attendance is about 120,000 people, it currently has a max capacity of 99,354. 
FC Barcelona is the third most valuable sporting franchise on the planet and one of the most successful teams in the Spanish soccer league, so this is one of the most recognizable stadiums in sports. As well as hosting all of Barcelona's home games, it's also used by the Catalonia national football team, and it's a preferred venue for high-profile events too. In 1982, it hosted five of the Soccer World Cup games. It's regularly used for European national competition finals and for the finals of the European club competitions as well. As it's over 65 years old, however, it's begun to fall behind other stadiums in terms of modern features. So a massive renovation project started in June of 2023, with a focus on the technological aspects. The entire third tier is going to be demolished and rebuilt, while the first and second tiers will be substantially improved, and it's such a huge undertaking that it's not expected to be completed until the beginning of 2025 to 26, with FC Barcelona having to move to a much smaller stadium in the interim. Number 11. Melbourne Cricket Ground, Australia Known by locals simply as the G, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, which is in the Yarra Park region of Melbourne in Australia, holds the record as being the biggest stadium in the Southern Hemisphere. With a location that means it's within walking distance of the city centre, it's not only the home of cricket in Australia, but also regularly used to host other sporting events, such as Aussie Rules football and soccer. They broke ground at the site in 1853 by the Melbourne Cricket Club, on land that was controversially of significance to the indigenous people of the region. Several stands were built in the following years that gave it a capacity of around 8,000 people by 1877, when the stadium hosted the world's first ever cricket test match, something that would establish its place in the sport's history, and through a series of major expansions in the time since, it now boasts a capacity of just over 100,000 people. Having hosted Olympic and Commonwealth Games events, rugby union and rugby league matches, and being the largest venue for concerts in Melbourne too, the MCG is far more now than just a cricket ground. It's been put on the Australian National Heritage List of Important Historical Structures, and described as a shrine, a citadel, a landmark, and a totem that symbolizes Melbourne to the world. But despite this, for sports enthusiasts in Australia, there's no greater thing than seeing the national team walking up to the wicket here. Number 10. Bryant-Denny Stadium, Alabama, United States Located on the campus ground of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, the Bryant-Denny Stadium has, for 94 years, been the home ground of the Alabama Crimson Tide football team, which plays in the Southeastern Conference. At first, the stadium had a capacity of 12,000, with just 6,000 attending the inaugural games in 1929 but in its development it was designed with hopes that it would be expanded to seat 66,000 spectators, and upgrades have taken it much further than that. Through eight different expansion projects, the stadium now has a capacity of 100,077 people, making it the fourth largest in the Southeastern Conference and the eighth largest in the U.S. As well as rebuilding the original stand and adding additional decks, the huge number of people going to each game has meant that substantial redevelopment of the area around the stadium has been needed as well, with it becoming a focal point of the campus and university life. This effort has proved to be well worth it for the team too, as they boast an impressive record at the field, with as of 2022, 244 wins, 50 losses, and 3 ties. It didn't, however, see some of the most famous moments of the team between the 1920s and 80s, because it had a lower capacity than Legion Field in Birmingham, and so the important games were usually played there. The expansion of the stands at the Bryant-Denny Stadium eventually meant that it became, by far, the largest in the state, though, so every game has been played there since. Number 9. Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, United States the Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, which is on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin, is the home field of the university's Longhorns football team. The stadium, named after legendary coach Darrell K. Royal, holds a special place in the hearts of Texas Longhorn fans and is the symbol of college football in Texas. The stadium's history dates back to its opening in 1924, and it's undergone several expansions and renovations over the years to accommodate the passionate fan base. With a seating capacity now of 100,119 spectators, it's known for its vibrant atmosphere and enthusiastic support from fans. On game days, the stadium transforms into a sea of burnt orange, the signature color of the Longhorns, with the passionate crowd creating an electrifying environment. The stadium's architecture is impressive, featuring unique design elements and modern facilities. 
The iconic Bevo's Ranch, a western-themed area named after the university's beloved Longhorn Steer mascot, offers a festive pregame experience for fans. While inside the stadium itself, there are state-of-the-art video boards, concession areas, and seating options, meaning everyone gets a great view of the action on the field. As the home of football at the university for so long, the stadium has seen many memorable moments in college football history. It's hosted countless high-profile games, including rivalries against teams like the Oklahoma Sooners and Texas A&M Aggies, and it's also been used to stage postseason contests, conference championships, and even national championship games. Beyond just football, the stadium is a world-class venue in its own right, so as well as being where university commencement ceremonies and celebrations are held, it's also often turned into a music venue for concerts too, ensuring that it will remain as the cultural and social center for the university and the city of Austin. Number 8. Neyland Stadium, Tennessee, United States Found in Knoxville, Tennessee, Neyland Stadium is a historic and revered college football stadium that's the home field for the University of Tennessee Volunteers football team. Named after Tennessee football coach Robert Neyland, who ran the team in three separate stints between 1926 and 1952, it was first opened in 1921, with just a capacity of a few thousand people. It soon became clear that this was a hugely popular venue, though, and as the university began to grow, the stadium had to expand alongside it. The first development took place just five years after the first game, with 12 further projects in the century since. It now impressively has a maximum capacity of 101,915 people, although its record attendance set in 2004 currently stands at 109,061. From its opening until 1967, the field was made up of natural grass, but this was replaced in 1968 with artificial turf to help with drainage. This, though, was linked to an increase in the number of player injuries, so it was taken up in 1993 and auctioned off to raise funds, and has returned to being natural grass ever since. The stadium's architecture reflects that classic beauty of collegiate stadiums, featuring a traditional bowl design with seating that surrounds the field. The famous Tennessee River runs alongside the stadium, adding to the atmosphere. And on game days, to really get the crowd buzzing, the pride of the Southland Band, Tennessee's marching band, adds to the electric ambience with their unrivaled performances. It's the focal point of collegiate football in the state, but Neyland Stadium has held culturally important events over the years, too. Perhaps most famously was the Billy Graham Crusade in May of 1970, where President Nixon gave a speech. Held at the height of the anti-war movement and just a few weeks after a devastating shooting at Kent State University, a number of protesters were arrested for trying to disrupt the event, and for a time, Neyland Stadium and the University of Tennessee was thrust into the political spotlight. With high-profile concerts, religious gatherings, and many other types of events, too, it was a beacon of the community, particularly in the 1980s, before the decision was made to reduce the number of non-football events in order to protect the field and prevent the damage that was being caused to it. Moving on to number 7, Tiger Stadium, Louisiana, United States. Known locally as Death Valley, it's almost impossible to visit the Louisiana State University without seeing Tiger Stadium, which is in Baton Rouge. First opened in 1924 with a large capacity for the time of 12,000 people, seven major expansion projects along with regular renovation works now means that it has an official capacity of 102,321 spectators, making it the second largest in the Southeastern Conference. It's home to the LSU Tigers football team who have an impressive record there, much of which is to do with the incredible atmosphere that has led to it being known as one of the most intimidating venues you could ever play at. Former Alabama head coach Bear Bryant once described the Tiger Stadium as being the worst place in the world for a visiting team. It's like being inside a drum. And most commentators seem to agree that it is the loudest stadium they ever cover the sport from. Interestingly, one of the reasons for this is the stadium's unusual geographical features, as it's practically situated below sea level. Along with the way it's built, sound is actually amplified there. It was also the first place that nighttime games were played under lights, and to this day, the team continues to perform much better in the evenings than during the day. This has caused some controversy, though, both from other team officials who thinks it gives the Tigers too much of an advantage, and from organizers in Louisiana who have to balance the desire to win with choosing an earlier playtime that can be far more lucrative because of the TV broadcast deals. 
Occasionally, it's used for concerts, during which the maximum attendance record was set at 127,000 people. The stadium has long been a central part of Louisiana life, but no more so than in 2005. That was the year when Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans and damaged the Superdome, which meant residents looking for entertainment and a distraction from the tragic events that unfolded were faced with losing their football team. Fortunately, the New Orleans Saints were able to play their games at Tiger Stadium instead, which cemented the venue and local football lore. Number 6. Kyle Field, Texas Holding the record for being the largest stadium in the Southeastern Conference, Kyle Field, which is located in College Station, Texas, is the home field of the Texas A&M University Aggies football team. Amazingly, it's been used by the team since 1904 in one form or other and originally had room for 500 spectators, and it was used primarily for the university's football and baseball teams, being named after the former student and professor who made it all possible. The decision was made in the 1920s to invest in building a concrete stadium, and by 1929, a horseshoe-shaped one had been built with seating for almost 38,000. Further expansion works took place in five main phases, with the last one being completed in 2015, and it can now accommodate 102,733 spectators at each game. Although the stadium record attendance was set in 2014 with 110,633. With such a huge number of people in attendance, this used to be the stadium that scared journalists the most, but not because of the noise. The old press box, which was at the top of the West Deck Stadium, would sway back and forth when the supporters sang Aggie Warham ahead of each game. And for those reporters who hadn't been there before, despite there being warning signs, it was nerve-wracking. Today, the stadium retains the horseshoe-shaped seating arrangement that wraps around the playing field in a nod to its past. But there has, of course, been significant development not just in the stadium itself, but around it as well. The home of the Twelfth Man statue, a tribute to the loyalty and dedication of the Aggies fans, stands proudly at the entrance. While the student section, known as the Aggie Student Bonfire Memorial, is a designated area that pays tributes to the Aggies' cherished traditions, there is also several other surprising additions, such as cemetery across the street from the field with a small electronic scoreboard nearby. This is where each of the canine mascots of the team are buried after they die, and it's a tradition that they get a military funeral too, with some having as many as 10,000 people showing up in their memory. Number 5. Ohio Stadium Ohio Stadium, often known simply as the Horseshoe, is on the campus of Ohio State University, and it's the home field of the Ohio State University Buckeyes football team. It was first opened in 1922 to replace Ohio Field, and it was one of the largest stadiums in the world at that time, with an almost unbelievable capacity of 66,210 people. The year after, a running track was added, and for a long time it doubled as an athletic stadium until the track was permanently removed in 2000, and further expanded to increase its capacity to what it is now, with space for 102,780 people, making it the third largest on-campus stadium in the U.S. Taking on a traditional horseshoe shape, the field is currently sponsored by SafeLight, a Columbus-based glass repair company, which has its logos present all over. Unusually, it was only in 2014 that the stadium had permanent lights added, so night games were extremely rare before then, and even now, they don't happen too often because of TV scheduling. The stadium focuses on football and is built to cater the sport as much as possible, but it's also been home to several other teams, too. Between 1996 and 1998, it hosted Major League Soccer games, although only around 25,000 seats were open for them. And it's also been used to put on showpiece events, such as an International Soccer Championships Cup match in 2016 between Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain, which attracted a crowd of 86,000 people. It's also a popular concert venue, having been used by Taylor Swift, Beyonce, One Direction, and Metallica, and it's home to the annual Buckeye Country Superfest event, which attracts tens of thousands of people to see a range of artists perform. Number 4. Beaver Stadium, Pennsylvania, United States The home ground of the Penn State Lions, Beaver Stadium is on the university campus in State College, Pennsylvania and it's the second largest stadium in the United States. It began life as New Beaver Field, which opened in 1909 with a capacity of just 500 people. By 1960, though, the location was deemed inappropriate, and plans were put in place to completely dismantle the whole thing. And along with extra seating to increase its capacity to 46,000, it reopened a year later. A further eight expansion projects have since more than doubled its size, and it now has a capacity of 106,572, making it one of the most intense sporting atmospheres in the world. 
Beaver Stadium is renowned for its passionate fan base and enthusiastic crowd support. Penn State fans, known as the Nittany Nation, are among the most dedicated in college football, creating a lively atmosphere on game days. The famous whiteout tradition, where fans wear white attire to create a sea of white in the stadium, is truly a spectacular sight to see and be immersed in. With a strong tailgating tradition outside the stadium and often voted as having the best student section of any stadium in the U.S., it's an incredible venue that's also often voted as the best in college football. Despite its official capacity figure, the record attendance at the stadium was set in September of 2018 with 110,889 spectators. And in 2002, it broke the NCAA record for the number of spectators through the 13-game season, with a total of more than 1.2 million, which averaged to almost 96,000 per game. Despite temptations to introduce artificial turf, the stadium has had a grass pitch ever since it first opened, with the university wanting to combine the traditions of football with modern amenities. With the last major works taking place in 2011, an upgrade is now being planned, and if the funding is secured, this could well become the largest stadium in the U.S. within a few years. Number 3. Michigan Stadium, Michigan, the United States Michigan Stadium is also known as the Big House. It's located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where it's the home field of the University of Michigan Wolverines football team. Currently with a capacity of 107,601 spectators, it holds the record as being the largest stadium in the United States. And there's only one other venue in the world that's bigger than it, and it hosts regular sporting events. It's the sheer size and impressive architecture that makes it an awe-inspiring sight. And even with so many people in there now, its bowl-shaped design ensures excellent views of the field from every seat. It was first opened in 1927, with a capacity of 72,000 people and has been where the Wolverines play ever since. Seven expansion programs have lifted its capacity to where it's now, but it was in 1975 that the stadium began one of the most impressive records in a world sport. Since then, every single home game held there has attracted more than 100,000 spectators, a streak of more than 400 games, and it set the record for the NCAA single-game attendance in 2013, with 115,109. Also used for the university's main graduation ceremonies, hockey games, and even a soccer match in 2014 between Real Madrid and Manchester United that attracted a crowd of 109,318, which is far more than either team gets at their home grounds. Michigan Stadium made its place in political history too, as the place that President Lyndon B. Johnson announced his Great Society program in 1964. What's exciting about the future of this stadium in particular is that it's been built with footings that will allow it to be easily expanded whenever needed, and with the original architect's dream being that one day it will have a capacity of more than 150,000 people, it's just a question of when the funding will be available to finally make it happen. Number 2. Rungrado 1st of May Stadium, Pyongyang, North Korea Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea, has a number of huge structures that have been built to show the architectural prowess of the isolated country. But there's probably no greater sign of excess than the Rungrado 1st of May Stadium. Built in 1989, it has a ridiculous capacity of around 114,000 spectators and has a distinctive design that features a unique circular shape with tiered seating that surrounds the entire field. The stadium's exterior is adorned with vibrant colored panels, which makes it stand out from every angle. The reason it's been controversial, though, is that there are no regular sports leagues or events that come close to attracting large enough crowds to actually fill the stadium. And while it is used for soccer matches and some athletics events, you'll never see it in full during these. The main reason it was built in the first place was in response to South Korea being awarded the Summer Olympics in 1988 and an attempt to show that North Korea would have been a better option. And now it's mainly used for political rallies that, because of the way things work in the country, are often pictured with the stadium being to full capacity. These events showcase synchronized performances, military parades, and other displays of loyalty and patriotism, and are said to have audiences of more than the advertised 114,000 people. But it was in 1995 that the attendance record was supposedly set during a surprise event. In that year, Collision in Korea, a wrestling event organized by New Japan Wrestling and WCW, became the largest pay-per-view event ever held. And according to official figures, the two-day event attracted 150,000 people on the first day and a whopping 190,000 on the second. Number 1. Narendra Modi Stadium, Ahmedabad, India 
While football may be the most popular sport in the United States, and soccer is the most popular around the majority of the rest of the world, in India the national sport is cricket, and it's one that particularly lends itself to the creation of large stadiums. The Narendra Modi Stadium, being named after the current Prime Minister of the country, was originally opened in 1983. But after being completely rebuilt over several years from 2015, it now has an official capacity of 132,000 people. It's located in a sports complex in the city of Ahmedabad and is exclusively used to host cricket matches. The hope is that it will become the world center of the sport, and after already hosting a number of high-profile events, it will be the venue for the final of the Cricket World Cup in November of 2023, and in doing so, will inevitably entrench itself within the history of the sport. It covers a total area of 63 acres and also has its own Olympic-sized swimming pool. LED lights surround the stadium, as opposed to traditional floodlights that are typically used at cricket grounds. And the way the structure's been designed means there are no structural pillars at all, so each one of the 132,000 seats is unobstructed, albeit some are rather far away from the action taking place on the wicket. Cricket is played on a small pitch with a large outfield around it, and this stadium is one of the only one in the world to contain 11 center pitches on the main ground, which can be changed between if the grass wears way too much on one. This ensures that games are always able to take place on schedule, which is particularly important if you have so many people traveling to a venue. If it looks familiar but you haven't ever watched any cricket, then it's possibly because the only non-cricket event to be held there was during President Trump's visit to India, when the stadium hosted an event to welcome him called Namaste Trump. Even then, though, the stadium wasn't filled to its maximum capacity, and it's only expected to first do this during the finals of the Cricket World Cup. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.